miss that. But what I want to do is I want I, I definitely have to. We can't we cannot have you here and not. I mean, just talk about the the iconic just weight and and effect that different world had on yes. just it, it, it. You you guys really put forth a movement wanting you know black people to go to college, man. Yeah. Like for real, like what was, first of all, what was the, when you got the role, what was that process in short? What was that process? Obviously the audition process, but what was that when you get down to that final, those final choices and what were your thoughts and were you thinking like, if I hope, or you were just like, Hey man, whatever happens, happens. So you, you, you said in short, because you know, the, these casting stories are yes. always long. <laughs> yeah. So the short version is. I was auditioning. So we had finished school days and I came out to LA for the summer in May. Mm -hmm. By August, when classes were about to start again, that's when they started auditioning for a different world. They were going to do the spinoff. So I didn't have an agent. I, I, I had bumped into Spike on the street, asked him for a part in the movie. That's how I got school days. When I got to Los Angeles, Tyra Farrell introduced me to the Gage Group, and they decided to take me on as a client. By the time they took me on, I had gone out on maybe two auditions. Then they sent me on this audition for A Different World, and I went in with Eileen Knight. Mm -hmm. Now, when I auditioned for School Days, it was Robbie and Spike in a room about this big. Yeah, That's how I got the job. Uh -huh. Then I went to audition for Eileen Knight. And then... I called Kadeem because he and I are friends now. Mm. We're, we've gotten really close from school days. And I said, I'm auditioning for this spinoff of the Cosby show called A Different World. He said, yeah, I heard about it. You know, the, um, oh, uh, not Ross, Barry Ross, but the casting folks in New York mm -hmm. knew Kadeem because he also had done an episode of Cosby and they were casting us there. He said, yeah, they called me in for it too. I was like, oh, great. Then I got a call back. So I called Kadeem. I said, I got a call back. He said, me too. And the next callback was with Eileen and like one other person. I said, now I'm get I'm going to network. He said, me too. They're flying me, <laughs> they're flying me to, to Los Angeles. Nice. So he flew in to LA. Yeah. So when it was time, and this was all for the role of Dwayne Wayne. Uh -huh. So when it when we got to network, it was myself, Kadeem, and I want to say I think there was one other guy there. Uh -huh. So it's three of us. And they took Kadeem first. Now, everybody has their theory about how it goes. You take the first choice in or yeah. you take the last one. Yeah. And all I know, they was like, Kadeem. And they give him a pound. And, you know, all you, you could hear outside. Yeah. And there's a bunch of laughter. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right? So he comes out and he's like, hey, there. And then I walked in the room. I walked in. There were like 40 people in this room. Those are, Yeah, that's how it used to yeah. be. Four, 40 people in the room and all of them like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make me laugh. Yeah. I had never seen anything like it. I froze. It was the Aww. worst audition of my life. Tank. Bomb. I was used to seeing two people. Yeah. Nobody yeah, told yeah. me what yeah. that was going to be. I had no clue. Right. right. And I was completely blown away, intimidated by, intimidated by the whole situation. So I was awful. And so Kadeem ends up getting the job. I got to remember this short verse. Mm -hmm. Now, Kadeem. Uh, is a classic New Yorker. Mm -hmm. He does not have a driver's license. So when he came out, now that he had to stay for real, mm -hmm. he came to live with me. Mm -hmm. So I'm driving Kadeem to work to the job I didn't get every day. <laughs> <laughs> and Kadeem was so kind. To, we, we just did a panel at Syracuse. It was Jasmine, Kadeem, myself, and Cree. Uh -huh. And when I told this story, I said, you know, I had to j drive Kadeem to work every day to the job I didn't get. And he said, oh, yeah, you had to drive me home, too. Oh. <laughs> I'm ready. Yes. Uh, pick him up. Come pick me up, too. <laughs> so I would come to work every day picking him up. But then by doing that every day, you know, um, it, it was such a, a family atmosphere. So, yeah. you know, got friendly with Marissa and Jasmine was yeah. already working on the show. And Lisa and Lenny at the time, because yeah. Lisa and Lenny were together. And... Um, Ellen Falcon was the director that oh, first yeah, yeah. season yeah. and so I was just coming back and forth and we were hanging out mm -hmm. about midway through Robbie Reed took over casting from Eileen Knight and mm -hmm. Robbie called me and said hey there's this, this uh, uh, one line in the show this week you want to do it 
I was like, okay. They're like, you, you hear all the right, time. You anyway. already over here. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Card this yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this way you can be here for real. So I was like, cool. So this this was uh, uh, the line was it, there was a party scene. My character walks up to Whitley and says, "I knew it could be done." That's it, and then walk away. So that line came up on tape night, on rehearsal night, mm -hmm. and the actual performance went something like, I knew <laughs> it <laughs> could be done. I mean, I, I stretched it out for like 20 minutes trying to get all the screen time I can get. And then, you know, we were finished, yeah. right? So then I knew I was done. So I only had one other scene, which was the last scene in the show. So I go back upstairs to the dressing room and I change into my other outfit. Mm -hmm. And I'm chilling. Daryl! Like, what? What are you doing? I'm like, I'm ready for the last scene. We have to do it again. Oh. <laughs> you didn't know about that. I didn't know. I didn't know. I get, I got to, and I got to change clothes now. Yeah, it takes yeah, all the time. Yeah. I'm all the way upstairs. When I come back downstairs, all the execs and everybody looking like, oh, I'm like you know, it is, yeah, I'm yeah, costing yeah. them money, the audience and all this. Yeah. And the funny thing is, they found out I wasn't there. They started the scene, and Jasmine turned, and there was nobody there to say that. Oh, stand up. no. <laughs> That's how they oh, found my out God. that I wasn't there. That's so, hilarious. So I think I've ruined my reputation now on yeah. the set, right? So it was a couple weeks later <laughs> where Keisha Knight Pulliam was coming to play Rudy, who was coming to visit Denise, mm -hmm. and she falls in love with Whitley. But Keisha was a minor, so she couldn't work. So Robbie called me again, said, look, Daryl, this isn't a role, but I want you to be a stand-in for Keisha because she, you know, she can't work. She has to be at school. Right. Um, but, you know, for camera, we're going to need you to be her size. So they got me like hockey uh, pads to be on my knees uh -huh. so I could be, you know, an right, eight-year-old right, right. girl, and I had to go because she was trying to do a <laughs> southern accent like uh, a little girl, you know. So I had to do that all week, and everybody just thought it was the funniest thing. Uh, so they hated me a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Suddenly now it was really cute, and I was funny, and they liked it. And that entire week, Rudy had to get in bed with Denise, and she had to get in bed with Whitley or something like that. So uh, I had to curl up in bed with Lisa Bonet, uh, and then I had to get in bed with Jasmine. Right, so right. it was a, it was a brutal week for me, yeah, just yeah. brutal. Brutal. Oh. It just sounds awful. And then it was uh, a couple, you know, like there were a couple one-liners after that. Mm -hmm. Then there was the episode where Dwayne was going to be dating an older, an upperclassman. Uh -huh. And they wanted somebody to play his best friend. That's when they called me in. But they said this was going to be a recurring role. And Tom and Marcy said they wanted to open it up to casting. Right. Now. I told you this is a long, long story. No, no, tell yeah, it. So, so, it. Tell so, it. Tell it. so when Kadeem and I were in Atlanta shooting school days, we would go to Six Flags and we would record Run DMC songs because they used to have a little recording booth. You could do uh -huh. karaoke and yeah, record yeah. the song. So I'm Daryl. He was Joe. And I bought myself this little hat to look like the hat that Run DMC used to mm -hmm. wear. Then... Um, during that summer, I got, uh, uh, or, or right before the summer, in school days, if you notice, I played Big Brother X-Ray Vision. I had these mirrored sunglasses. Yeah. Well, those glasses were the Malcolm X black rim frames, but they were just clear. So instead of the black with the wire, right. they were white, clear right. with the wire. And then I put mirrored lenses in them. So I had to get regular glasses, so I just took the tint out of those glasses, and those were the glasses that I wore. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, uh, my uncle, my great uncle, who was a jazz musician, saw me wearing the hat. He said, you know, son, that's a cheap hat. You need to get yourself a pork pie. A pork, a Stetson pork pie. That's that son. That's what all the do. All the cats used to wear. The ladies mm -hmm. love. So I got the Stetson pork pie. So now. I got glasses, I got the pork pie, I got my little mustache, and they tell me we got to audition for it. They put in the breakdown. Ron, that was just the character's name. Hat, glasses, mustache. I was like, oh, no. 
<laughs> everything that I've created that's all mine yeah. is in the breakdown. And when I tell you everybody, Stoney Jackson, Jerome, like oh, everybody in their imagine. mother, where well, they opened it up because now the show's been on the air right. for a few weeks and is a mega hit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Everybody came for this audition. And wow. so finally, uh, when it was my turn to come in, it was Ellen Falcon. Robbie Reed, Marcy Carsey, and Kadeem was in there for Reed. So I walked in the room and they're like, what's up? I'm like, hey, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so we had instant chemistry. We 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 crushed the audition. I'm like, all right, well, I'll be out in the car when you're done so we can go home. I'm trying to eat, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're like, what do you mean? And like, I don't think Marcy knew at the time. It's like, well, that's his best friend and he lives at his house. <laughs> Everybody could go home now. So that's wow. how I got that role. And... Um, then they put me on like just a weekly player every week. I, I signed a one week contract for like the rest of the season. Hmm. Wow. And once the season was over and it was announced that Debbie Allen was coming on for the second season, mm -hmm. Debbie and Beth Ann, Kadeem's mother, mm -hmm. friends, and Debbie called Beth Ann and said she wanted to meet Kadeem and come out to the house. And Kadeem said, can I bring Daryl? She's like, Sure. Okay, honey, bring him too, yeah, yeah. right? Uh -huh. We we were having dinner. And Debbie cooked for us in her kitchen. And she she was talking to us about what she wanted, you know, for us for the second season. I said, "Well, you know, I'm I'm only a weekly player." That she said, "You're not under contract?" I said, "No." She said, "Honey, we're going to fix that." Wow. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. Wow. And that's how I became a season regular wow. starting in season 2.